honey love? What's up, girl? What's up, girl, honey love? I see you. What are you doing, real Sonia? What's up, Sonia? Fat, fat mama Sonia. What's up, fat, fat mama Sonia? What's up, fat, fat mama Sonia? What's up, Mayday? Lord Mayday. What's up, boy? What's up, Lord Mayday? What's up, my boy, Doc? What's it, Doc? Hmm? What's it, Doc? What you say, Doc? It's my big boy, Doc. What you say? All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another week, another episode of Game Dog Talk. And we got in the building. We have some of the, the some of the panel right now. We still waiting on walking down Ram. You know, Ram gonna be fashionably late. <clears throat> we got the legendary schoolboy, Mr. Richard Garcia. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. Welcome everybody. Yes, indeed. And we have my brother Eli Zachary in the building. What's up, Eli? What's going on? What's going on? Salute everybody. Salute. Yes, indeed. Ram will be here in a minute. I think Ram's getting off. What's up, uh, Brother Jermaine Hunter? I see you in the building, bro. Bank statement kennels. Let me scroll up and do a quick roll call. See what we got up in here. LR Nello, salute. Um, Arrowhead Kennels in the building. AJ, Miami Snoopy 305 in here. Left the American Pitbull Terry salute. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Jones, run them down, dread uh, two lives salute. What's that? One crew, uh, kennels and farms salute. Tony Gardner in the building, Ty Green. Let's see. Mike Lee, salute to you. King Cob uh, Cobra Kennels, Pitt Cartel. Arrowhead Kennels, Frank Rizzo, Knucklehead Kennels, Mo Boxing, AJ, Boris Baker, Colossal Massive, uh, OMK Kennels, Blunt Boy, SBC Kennels, SBO Kennels, let's see, OMK Kennels. <coughs> The Provocative Bully, Supreme Excellence, Kevin Porter, uh, Jermaine Hunter, Salute Bro, Bank Statement Kennels, Dead Game Boxing, uh, G Money, Outlaw Texas Kennels, uh, Word List, let me see here, uh, Alu Femi, Salute Family, Welcome Down Ram in the Building. Yeah, you know, Ram fashionably late as usual. <laughs> he say five minutes away, he'll be here. Cool. Let's see. Uh, salute to everybody here. We got F. Uh, uh, Cervantes. Salute to your son of Tank. Uh, Kill Bill. Tony Black. Dan G. R.A. Nixon. Salute, salute. Uh, North Pole Fishing. Salute. Man, sound good right now doing some fishing. <clears throat> Uh, Bulldog, salute to you. G Money, K Bo, uh, Chico Seller, uh, Mr. Garcia. You ever do any fishing? Yeah, yeah, we used to go. There's all kinds of uh lakes, you know, man made and natural lakes around here, every everywhere, you know, usually, usually uh, striper, even catfish, you know. I go right. to the sl slough out here, used to. I ain't done it in years, I ain't done nothing in years. Except yeah. Facebook. <laughs> That's what I like. I like striper and crappie. Yeah. Striper, crappie, and sandbags. Catfish, yeah. too. Yeah. Man, them sand dabs are high dollar in San Francisco, man. You want to pay some money for some fish, they charge your arm and a leg. Man. They're good, though. What, 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 what they call sand dabs? What? Sand dabs. Sand bag. Yeah. Yeah, they probably call them sand dabs. We call them sand bags. But I, I stay between two lakes. Like, my, my if I leave out of my... Uh, Little uh subdivision. I stay in the country, but it's like a little subdivision. If I leave out, if I go straight, I run right into the lake. And then if I go the other way, I run into the other lake. And then probably like 30 minutes, 35 minutes away, it's another big lake. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm about um, 15 minutes from two lakes here. Yeah, I'm surrounded by water. We got so many 
<clears throat> ponds and lakes and stuff and rivers around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I like being around fresh water, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a good place to clear your head, man. You go out there, have bring yeah. one of your dogs with you, and just go out there and uh, just relax. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't no lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to get down to it, though. But uh, how you been, though, Mr. Garcia? I've been good. I've been good. Busy, but good. I got back from Mexico a week or so ago. We had a good show out there, man. Salute. Salute to the Toluca. And uh, we had a, a good time, man. They treated me like family. Had a, had a, they rented me a house in a gated community, took me all over, you know. Right. Fun. Made some new family out there. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Yes, indeed. Good hospitality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with you, Eli? How you been, man? Man, you know, trying to make it one day at a time. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get to our first question then. Um, first question from last week is, uh, can you teach a dog how to bite? Mr. Garcia. Uh, yeah, to an extent. I think you can. And, and I think what that means is, you know, when when a dog's biting, you want him to to bite with his whole mouth all the way to the back, you know. And and you can do that a couple of different ways, you know. I'm not a proponent of using a uh, pit bull for attack training or any of that. But that method that they when they grab the sleeve or grab the grab the uh, you know the body, you know, they they learn how to bite with their whole mouth. Them, them Malinois, man, they bite like a pit bull almost. But you can you can do that. Some, sometimes on the spring pole work, you know, what they use is, is is something that's too thick. You need to have something that's thin, like like a piece of leather or even a piece of rubber that's thin. Hope is okay, but, but you know, my, my, the way I look at it is you want the dog to be able to close their mouth as much as they can so they have to breathe through their nose, you know. And, uh, one of the best things to use, though, is just a raw uh, beef bone, those big old beef bones, you know, and that, that gets their jaw working, you know, and, and they'll bite with their with their back teeth, you know. You want them to go all the way to the back if they can, you know. And uh, a lot of times, if, if you're using a spring pole and keep or for work, you know, when you put them in, keep using it. You got to back off a week or two weeks before because it'll make a muscle bound. Their muscles need to relax. And if you don't, <clears throat> if you've done it improperly, what you'll notice is the dogs bite with their front teeth. You know, that's not good. They're not biting correctly. And, uh, you know, when, when I mentioned that, that method I use, you know, with the toy and all that, if you give them something soft like that, they'll, they'll, they'll just for the reason that it's something soft, you know, they grab it with their whole mouth and they bite down. That's the action you kind of want them to learn is use their whole mouth, bite down as much as they can, work something, and then so that they're breathing through their nose. You know, that, that's uh, that's the way I look at it. Because some don't. If, if, uh, if they get into the habit of biting with the front part of their mouth, you know, it, it's they're, they're not effective right. as, as they would be using their whole mouth. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's kind of like you know, it's the leverage involved. It's kind of like a, a mouse trap. You know, you want them to go whack like that, and that action actually it'll it'll help to sink those cutters in, or at least allow them to hold on with their whole mouth, and that that makes them breathe through their nose. You know. Right. I was I was a real stickler for that. Some people use a ball, you know, but but it's for me it's too wide because it allow them when they start getting taxed a little bit, you know, they'll start breathing through their mouth. Right. And and uh, you know I'll go over this maybe maybe next time about how to get them to to breathe through their nose, you know, the way we used to do it back in the day. That's basically that's basically it. You can use different methods. Just you know. It, uh, Use something where they can they can close their mouth as much as possible, 
and and use the back part of their teeth when they when they bite. Right. What's up, Brown Sugar Tay Tay? I see you in the building. Tay Tay. Uh, brother Eli, what's your take on that? On um, teaching a dog to bite. I, I agree with uh with schoolboy and what I used to do the exact same thing with the knuckle bone. But the one thing that I see that a, a lot of people do with spring poles that I didn't used to do when I used to know I was gonna go out and go work and work on the spring pole, I would actually take and and drop the uh drop the hide in a bucket of water and soak it. That way it'll be, it'll soften up like 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 uh school bar was seen. It'll soften up and then that way when they when they get ready to when they grab it, they kind of ball it like just like regular ski. They grab it and twist it and ball it and they get it deep back off in their in their mouth rather than just having the having the edge of it, having the tip of because if they just have a tip, they just holding it in the front of their mouth like he was seen. And that turned into a whole lot of skin holes basically and, and not really getting deep rooting into the into the, into the bite. So that was one big thing. And then I used to uh I think I got a video up on my on my on my witchcraft. I used to use a big tennis ball like but I would get it and shove it back off in a in a mouth, and that's and it would be a uh, stake in the middle of the yard. Like I said, I think I said that last week, and it was a bungee to a stake, and it would go all the way out, and they would grab that, and it, they would it would be at the edge of the chain spot, and they would have to work that. But you you got to constantly stay in hold on it, and I would shove it to the back of their mouth. If they came off of it, then they lose it. So then you shove it back in, you shove it back in their mouth. And give it to them, and then they gotta work it to keep the tension on it com completely. Keep all four feet on the ground, and they get give a full body workout. Yeah, those are those are two good tips with that with the leather. Like you were saying, you want it malleable, you know, because uh, uh, because if it's if it's stiff, you know, they ain't gonna hold on it to it right, and it'll slip out, you know. And the other thing, like maybe you're playing tug of war, like he was saying with the ball, you want to place whatever they're 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 using. You want to place it to the back of their mouth. You want you want to get them in the habit when they grab it, open their mouth. You you kind of shove it there. Whether you're playing tug of war, uh, you know, between two dogs or 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 tug of war by yourself, you know, I would actually grab it like that, you know, and then push it push it in their mouth. So if they, if they grab it with the back of their teeth. Those are two good tips, Eli. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. And um, another question we got here was, um, <clears throat> what makes a good dog man, character or accomplishments, from your, your perspective? Uh, we'll start with you, Brother Eli. It's going to be it's gonna be both, but more so than anything, your character. You know your accomplishments will come will uh, 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 come along the way, you know regardless if you if you active and if you're doing what you need to do. But your cat your character, like that 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 describe uh, a, a big uh, 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 a big deal of what goes into being a dog man. Whether it's how you set your standard, how you deal with other dog men, how you feed. All of that go into your character and, and your makeup as a dog man. So, I would say your character is the is, is the most important thing. Because if you have if you have good character, that means you're gonna be honest with yourself. You're gonna be honest about your dogs. You know, you ain't gonna lie to yourself. So, whether you whether you have accomplished a whole lot or not, you still gonna be honest on your yard. I I I, I knew some people that were very private that nobody will never know all their accomplishments. Hey, but hey, real quick, real quick. Go ahead. Hi there, little coward man with your ghost account. We know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> we know who you are. You know, have fun with the dogs and get fucked up the ass. <laughs> weirdo, man, bro, you weird, bro. You put that much energy into following people around and, 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 and being a fucking little kid. Don't come to the swamps if you don't want to be around the swamps. Exactly, man. Just really? talking about your business, bro. Like, goddamn, ain't nobody fucking with you. Ain't nobody said nothing to you. Nobody said your name or nothing. Hey, you come knocking like a little dick sniffer. God damn. Right. <laughs> but, <Hey>. yeah. 
There goes the whole thing, the character. Yeah. <laughs> talking about character. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, school boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd agree. You know, I always looked at it as, as you know, my wife helped me, wife helped me with this too. You got to be professional, you know, in everything you do. You want to have that, that, that standard of being a man and being honest, you know, because you can have a lot of accomplishments and everybody can know them. But if you're an asshole, you're still an asshole. They'll remember that more and they'll remember that first. You know, you're a thief and a cheat and a lie and all that. Your accomplishments ain't going to matter. And the accomplishments are important. But, you know, how do you go about getting if you do it the right way? Like Eli said, it's both. But your character, your integrity, your honesty, that matters most. I agree. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, whether you're a cheater or a piece of shit, all that kind of <laughs> stuff matters. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you never got yeah. nothing good to say about other dog men, it's always you and everything you've done and blah 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 blah. Like, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Don't be a what do they call hey. it? Tro- troll or something? Troll or yeah, troll, yeah, that's yeah. What they call them. yeah, yeah. Hey, no that. lie. I seen I seen a dude. Had champions, had so had so much money he could buy whatever he wanted, he bought whatever he wanted, shit. But at the end of the day, he couldn't go to a fucking show because he had gotten to it with so many people. He had did so much bullshit and so much dirt. It didn't matter how many good dogs he had; nobody wanted to fucking deal with. Him. Once those dogs got in his hand, nobody wanted to deal with. Him. It's it's one of those dogs. A lot of y'all probably want to breed to right now. It's somewhere else in somebody else's hands. And I knew that dog was with that dude, and nobody was trying to breed to him. Yeah, that's what's crazy about. It. I see that dog go for stud for for a healthy stud feed, and, and and he getting bred out the ass. He's a good ass dog. When your character ain't right like that, motherfuckers don't want to be around you, man. You keep some a, a bunch of bullshit going on, like that's the shit that uh, that shit is just not it's just not what that is, man. Yeah, so, they'll even tell you if you. You know, back in the day, if you was coming to a show and there's somebody they don't like and you knew that they knew that you knew him, they tell you, don't bring that motherfucker. Don't bring him. Don't, if, if you bring him, don't come. So leave hey, him hey, that, say it's some funny shit. I called and asked about an old timer one time because I, I was just, hey, I was rambunctious and ready to go. And I called and asked my, and a dude said, I'm going to tell you like this. He said, I can't say there's no paperwork on him, or he done did this, or he done did that, he done did this. I can't confirm my story, but I'm just going to tell you, trouble seemed to follow. And that was enough for me. And this was a legendary dog. Yeah. And that was enough for me. Like, hey, trouble seemed to follow him. Okay. That's yeah, you don't, need the, you don't need the headache, man. So, you know, and I'm worth it. Got to play nice or they won't play with you, you know? <laughs> yes indeed all right let's go on and get to this uh salute to doug in the super chat showing love much love much appreciation man says dog man do salute dog man salute to your family salute, <clears throat> appreciate it yeah we get the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the little weirdo keep coming back with all his ghost accounts he's yeah. so obsessed and so insecure as a man it's pathetic man it's like Tom Brady and Michael Jordan. You're not neither one of them. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weirdo, man. It's an insecure motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. All right, let me see here. Next question is, <clears throat> what happened to the old Puckett bloodline? You know anything about that, Mr. Garcia? No. doesn't sound familiar to me at all. What, what does it go back to, Do you know? I don't know. It's a question of... Uh, it- is, is is that this old snooty Jeep stuff? It might be. I, I, I think I think I, if, if I'm thinking right, I think it was some old snooty Jeep dogs. They was some real rough, durable, uh, 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 real solid built, real solid built dogs. You know, they didn't have a lot of good natural wind to them or, 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 or nothing, but they were just real sturdy dogs, and you can put the wind in them if you know how to work them. You know, they were real strong. If it's what a, if it's the ones I'm, I'm I'm thinking about, I gotta look at it. But I don't think it's the regular spelling that we thinking that it is. I think it's a little bit different spelling. And if it if it is, that's what they are those snoot those old snooty Jeep dogs. 
Okay. What's up, Ram? What's going on, Ram? Oh, she just pulled up to the crib. Salute, everybody. What up, Eli? 78 OG school boy. Salute, Ram. Everybody in the chat. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. See, we had a visitor pop up like right on cue. Yeah, <laughs> can't fucking write that shit, man. <laughs> yeah, weirdo, man. Hey, hey. I thought he died eight. in a house fire or something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't fuck with him. Shit, if I don't fuck with you like that, to me, you dead to me. Shit, I'd be surprised man. when he pop up like, yeah, yeah. you still alive? What happened? That's just with like, that's just police stuff, man. Like just. Coming around trying to start, he see something good going on. He not involved, so he want to create pages and start confusion and shit on everybody's channel. But he's supposed to hate the swamp so much and shit. He supposed to be so above everything. Fuck out of here, man. Uh, and that's proved the point. You know, your fucking character fucking plays a part way more than your accomplishments, man. This motherfucking. Grade A motherfuckers I know who never match the dog. They just feed and breed them, you know? Make sure they shit straight. But they upstanding motherfuckers. You got to respect that. And you got like low life slime ball motherfuckers who got all these merits and shit and they wouldn't even invite them to a motherfucking goddamn <clears throat> garbage burning contest. You feel me? Like, <laughs> hey, nobody fucking with you, man. Go on. Oh, shit. I don't care what you did, what you produced, none of that. I hope all that shit died this summer from heat strokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I want to call the FBI on you now, Rem. Yeah. Okay, all right, here we go. Do the uh, world a favor. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Hey, another question. I'm going to start with you, Ram, for this one. Historically speaking, what are some reasons besides health that an animal doesn't reach its championship title? Well, it's a couple. You know, uh, I've seen some where it looked like that motherfucker was finna quit and people pick him up, you know, take him home and put up a stud fee for him and shit. And be wondering why that motherfucker lived right next door to me and I didn't want nothing off of him. <laughs> you feel me? Then it's other reasons like I done been ducked, you know? You know, my motto, I go after two timers with my first time out in my dog, uh, uh, smart Alec. He was like that, man. He stopped a uh, good ass one named uh, Payaso going for his championship in devastating fashion. So when his word got around it, then nobody had that weight, you know, <laughs> like nobody, nobody. And I ain't just talking about, you know, my local area. I called it all over the place, tried to get them. They were like, nah, man, nope. We ain't doing it. <laughs> so, you know, shit like that happens, man. And then sometimes shit, motherfucking life happens. And you look up, the dog is old. Like, goddamn, this motherfucker six already? Shit. <laughs> I was only going to breed him for two years, but not realizing when you did that, he was almost four. So it just be different shit besides health that play a part. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, Mr. Garcia, what's your take on that? Uh, one of the main reasons because they die, <laughs> they yeah. died, you know, so their career didn't continue. But you know, they lose teeth, they sustain injury, you know, it, it, it keeps them from camp- campaigning longer. You know, sometimes the dude just hold back, sometimes it's a long, drawn out fight, and somebody with half a brain says that's enough, he proved himself. You know, every, every time you do one, it takes something out of them. If it, even if it's a short one, he still still could be, you know, detrimental to their health, so to speak. You know, uh, he get broke leg, busted this, that. You know, uh, age, like Ram said, all that duck people duck them. You know, it's a, you know, I've, I've posted dogs up before. You know, two time winner, champion, this and that. People ask, you know. Well, how come how come they didn't go? If he's such a bad dog, how come how come they didn't go for his third? How come they didn't go all the way to grand championship? Well, just those reasons I give. You know, motherfucker died. <laughs> he's done. Uh, you know, they lose all their teeth. And there's people that'll do them with broken teeth, no teeth, but you know, you're missing some tools there. And some some can can win, could win. You know, e- even with without all their tools, but 
you know, uh, it's a chance you take and, and, uh, there's, there's almost name any, any kind of reason that they didn't continue. And, and I'm sure there's a dog that for that reason didn't, it's not that uncommon, you know, and, uh, you know, you have to take the titles for what they are, you know, it's a good accomplishment. But it doesn't mean that the dog is a superior athlete or an ace or any of those other terms we use. You know, it's just that the champion, all that means is the dog won three. Grand champion, all that means is the dog won five. The quality of the animal should be the question. And, and a lot of them, there, there's a lot of dogs that were very good dogs, badass dogs. And some of them, you know, they just, they could win three. Some people will hold back after three because in their mind, they don't feel they could win five. But the dog's not good enough. He's good enough to be a champion, but not a grand champion. And, you know, I respect people for that. Uh, that that's about it. Yes, sir. Uh, Eli, what's your take on it? I mean, pretty much the same thing as, as, as what the fellow said. I've seen it where people have just been flat out duck, and I've seen it where she, you did one keep and then somebody paid you a forfeit. You did another keep, somebody paid you a forfeit, and then shit. Yeah, you look up and that time gone, you lost that time. You you're doing back to back keeps like that. You know, took the most you don't took the most out of out of the damn dog. Other times, another thing that that, that stopped a lot of dogs is like Balbesia. You know, they might have went for one, went for two, and then end up catching Balbesia in number two. And shit. Somebody may not know the treatment, or even after the treatment, the dog don't look the same. That may stop them, you know. Different little, diff, different little deals stop those dogs all the time from being as great as from not being as great as they can be by having those accomplishments that really that 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 solidify that to a lot of people. But in reality, man, it's it's some dogs on some people yard that I I I, I can tell you personally. I seen a champion and when I seen him in his show and then when I seen him in his role, I seen a three-legged dog handle. <laughs> so that 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 that, that goes to tell you yeah. how how how, <laughs> how steward that can be. Level of competition, you can run into to a few people, and especially if you you're around your local area and you know everybody, or you got a buddy over here and a buddy over here, and you Hey man, say we got this one. Yeah, oh, we come together and, and, and do it together. That's how it used to be. And the next thing you know, he said, "Oh yeah, that little dude over man, he talk all the noise. He got a lot of money, but he ain't got he he ain't got most he ain't got much sense. He can't put one together. Where he feeding cornflakes and and, and, and and pedigree. And next thing you know, you look up, you got a champion that ain't really a, of any real quality. You know, because they've been picking on they they've been picking through. You know, so yeah, that don't that don't say as much, but it happens a lot. It happens very often. A lot of times, like schoolboy said, a lot of people just have enough sense to go ahead and capitalize on what they got, rather than going out and risk it again. They think, why, why, why risk it to say that this one is that? When especially if I got kids off of them, and they acting good, are they already up to that point too, where they, where they starting to come into it? And I say, shit, yeah, I'd rather have ten or twenty of these motherfuckers than have just this one. So his breeding career is on. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. Um, next question is, in the past, why were some bloodlines known to consistently have a stopwatch attached to them? Um, what are you trying to say, motherfucker? Uh, quit. What are you trying to say, motherfucker? Ain't got no air? Like, yeah, like some dogs, you know, just... For example, yeah. like a macho butt dog, like you know that motherfucker would be on your ass for forty five minutes, and forty six minutes he packing it up, and forty seven minutes he over that wall type shit. Oh, talking about the dogs be getting fucked in the ass. You talking about? Well, yeah, <laughs> there was that specific bloodline. You know, <laughs> we just using that for an example. You feel yeah. me? Well, it's a good example too, cause this video of them jumping the box. You know, I believe I could fly. Not even touching that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I ain't lying. Yeah, no. Hey, I can't call you a lie. One of them did like some Allen Iverson shit. They motherfucker let it go and it wasn't there. It backed on them. Rupa was behind them looking in the crowd like, is that dog going to scratch? <laughs> that motherfucker was watching. He didn't even know that motherfucker was gone. <laughs> he looked no, he up like, what? Man, he was, he was was looking for, uh, now, how did that happen? <laughs> no, nah, he wasn't looking for his merits. Uh, was, that's why he was looking for his merits. It was, it was like, like, oh, you got my merits in the car. I'll be right back. I left my spray <laughs> in the car. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, the question, um, why would certain bloodlines have uh, uh, stamina issues, I guess? Um, so, well, know. well, what I think what they're saying is some dogs, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'd say bloodlines. I guess you could, you know, maybe, maybe someone in particular family of dogs. But some some dogs have what they call a stopwatch in them. Thirty minutes, they can quit. That's it. They'll give you a good thirty minutes, forty minutes, whatever it is, and it's almost like a stopwatch because right on that time, on time or near that time, they'll quit. It just yep. you know, uh, uh, you know, I had a lot of respect for Kenny Gaines because he was open about his dogs. You know, he would tell people if you can last thirty minutes with me, you're probably going to win. And he had some game dogs. He had some that went distance and all that. But he was more concerned with wrecking you, getting you out of there fast, you know. And he had a lot of champions, a lot of killers, you know. He loved that finish and hard fight. My buddy seen that champion time actually his. And he said after after it was over, I forget which one he saw him win, second or third. But after it was over, it looked like the dog had loose socks on. All the skin was down around his ankles so he really concentrated on mouth and if there was game great if not he didn't trip you know mm -hmm. but some right. some dogs are known for that having that that time clock that stop watching them you know uh if you breed dogs like that that's what you're gonna get mm -hmm. so if it's a bloodline that has it it's because it's in that bloodline it's part of their genetic makeup if you want to call it and, and you could have somebody that has the same type of dog, same bloodline as someone else, and and one will be known more for quitting, and the other will be known more for they don't quit, like like the bloodline is known for. So it, it's more individual, I think. You know, people I've seen I a lot of both. been to a lot of shows where 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 you know dogs quit big shows, man, and they, these people cleaning them up, they're gonna take them home, you know. Yeah. They don't call them and they breed them because they got a nice pedigree or whatever. Or they just, they don't do that. They don't call their dog. They have it in their head. People have it in their head. Well, it's all genetics, this and that. And, and they're going to throw what they're going to throw. No. No, that ain't true, man. If you breed game dogs, you're going to get game dogs. You breed a bunch of curves, you're going to get curves. Doesn't mean that, that you're not going to have both on on either side, but you know, you, you're you're more apt to get more game dogs if dogs you breed are game than if they cur. You know, somebody told somebody, I think it's a peddler. You know, it said, "Hey, you know, it's genetics and and whatever comes out comes out. There's no way you can you can you mm -hmm. can corner that market or you can have a high percentage of, of good ones. They just pop up wherever they pop up. That ain't true." You know, I mentioned that before. Best, best breeders, best competitors in any genre, anything. They don't think that way. They don't breed that way. That's why they're top. That's why they have consistency, high percentage. You're always going to have dogs that quit. If you keep them dogs, all of them, don't call none of, none of them, and you, you keep the ones that quit too, and you breed them, well, you're increasing your odds of dogs that quit. It's simple to understand. People just don't believe it because they don't do it. Right. Salute to your S uh, SFS American Pitbull Terry Global in the building. I see your family. Salute to you, uh, brother Eli. Uh, let me ask you this: um, other than a muzzle, what can what can be done to prevent an aggressive mother from attacking her puppies? I, I used to. When I, I had I had a bishop, like she wouldn't just like flat out attack him when he was right there. 
she would uh uh like she get nervous from sounds and being around being around stuff. So I would keep her in the quietest place, but I would pull her out when I wasn't there. I would I would I would when I wasn't in there, I would pull her out because a few times I came back and she had just it wasn't no puppy. She had ate the puppy, you know. But I, I, I would pull her out when when I wasn't there. And I would uh I would make sure you make sure you keep them fed up, make sure you keep them healthy and keep them fed. Uh honestly, bro, just make sure you supervise them. Make sure you make sure you watch them, make sure you watching your animal. That was the biggest thing for me with this bitch. She was a horrible mother. She she killed she killed like three of the three of the puppies and had one puppy a whole day later. I was like, damn, what the fuck going on with her? She was just she was just a horrible ass mother and she I, I I started keeping her away from them and I would bring her back in and she would be around them and she, she would do good and then I when it when it when it was that time I would pull her back out you know I might I might be in there sitting in there with her for two, for, for for two hours just sitting down on my phone um uh, uh, laid back on laid back on on, on a little bench or a little pallet I had down there. And I'll be sitting in there doing what I was doing and shit. When when I had enough of sitting in there with her and the puppets had nursed up real good, I pull her back out of there, man. You know, I I bottle fed nine puppets. I had to bottle feed nine puppets. As a matter of fact, it was it was my highest percentage litter that I ever had because all those puppets had a relationship with me. <laughs> they all had a relationship with me. And I swore that that was that was the reason why. But I bottle fed all those puppies because the mama was so bad. I would say, man, supervise them, pull her out when, whenever, whenever, uh, whenever she not, uh, whenever she not nursing, bro. Because anything else, I mean, what you gonna do? Tire, do some old fashioned ass shit, tie her head down or something like that. Like, it ain't gonna do nothing but make her struggle, or make her panic, and kick the puppies around and pin them. And like, you, you can. Honestly, bro, that's what you have to do. You have to supervise and pull her out of there and just manage the feeding. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say, uh, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, pretty much what Eli said, you know. A lot of times, you know, if, if you keep them out in the yard around dogs, even if you have them in a pen off to the side or by their cell, they still hear everything that's going on, you know. And, uh, and they get worked up. They get frustrated, they get worked up, and a lot of times they take it out on the pup. If you had a bad mother, you know, it's something that just evil, just kills her pups. For me, I wouldn't keep her, you know. There's very few like that. It's usually some extenuating circumstance, you know. And what we used to do is we, we, you know, I had a pen off by itself, and I could keep some females in there, you know, uh, and they were fine. Other ones, I we had a set up in the pantry inside the house and i just keep them there with a the heater especially during the winter we always brought them in during the winter if they had pup winter pup keep them you know uh by their self and uh you know miss rowdy uh big red sister she her first litter she wasn't a very good mother she was squashing this and that so my wife kind of showed her how to you know take care of pups she would clean them and be in there with them when they were feeding, you know, she'd lay her down, make her lay down and stuff. She wasn't mean. She just wasn't a very, she wasn't, didn't have that, that instinct right off the bat. And after that first litter, she was fine with it. The next litter she had after that, you know, uh, if they're young too, that could be a factor because just like kids, you know, they don't, they don't have that maturity in their head and, and uh, they might just be, if they could lay on them or squish them or, you know, not pay attention to them and it's off by itself and it gets cold or whatever and dies. But, but, uh, Eli said, you know, monitor them. Don't have them around where they're going to get excited by something, you know, because, you know, it, it don't mean they're going to attack the pups and kill them. They could, but it could just mean they'll, they'll stomp on them. You know, they'll run over them. They'll get, they'll get mad and start screaming, hollering they hear some other dog or cat run by or something and then they hit them with the you know they step on them some people leave a chain on their female when they're up their pups and stuff i wouldn't do that because they'll 
they'll knock them around with that chain, you know. Some don't. They're real, real conscious of, of everything that's there, and they, they avoid, they're real gentle around their pups, you know. They won't get the chain, but most of them, you got a chain on them. When they move around, they don't, they ain't paying attention. They'll just hit the pups and all that to fuck them up. But separation from the yard is the best thing, and just monitoring them, you know. They eat every two hours, and if someone's home, you could, like Eli said, you just put her in there, let her feed, get her out, you know. But make sure the pups are warm, you know. That's part of the mother's job too, keeping it warm. Hey, and when she whip, when she whipping those fuckers, man, give her some attention too. Her hormones are all messed up and shit, and you in yeah. there. Most times, the first thing we do is dog men. All oh, attention is only on those puppies. But when that bitch was having those, was, was was getting ready to have those puppies, you was rubbing on her and you was you was sitting out there in the yard watching her every day. Like, ooh, that bitch gonna drop the mother load. She gonna drop the, she gonna drop a bunch of eggs. You was rubbing on her every day. Then all of a sudden, now your attention is on nothing but the puppies, and she just right there miserable and shit, having to feed yeah. all these motherfuckers in pain and shit. She'll start yeah. knocking them off. <laughs> yep, yep. My, my females were good, man. We we always, yeah. you know, we were we were hands on, so. My wife, us, kids, all that. As long as we were quiet, you know, we could be in there when they were having pups in case they needed some help, you know. And and they could the kids could pet the pups, pet her, they'd be all over her and stuff like that. That's a good point. You know, they still need that attention too. They might get jealous, you know. But but uh we just raised them that way. We're 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 all inclusive, you know, everybody part of the deal. And the females realize you're there to help them. You ain't gonna steal their pups and you ain't gonna do this and that. You just there to show her attention to and the pups and all that and and just being there with them, you know because because I didn't want anything to to set them off or you know some females are, are weird man they'll, they'll you know they don't want you around their pups man they'll growl at you and all like this and that I want like that we could pet them touch them help them clean up clean their area so they don't have to do it all the time you know and it it helped that that's part of the bonding process too you know. Keep that chair in the yard, man. Keep that chair in the yard. I, I love to see a dog man that got a chair in the yard. If you yeah. got that chair in the yard that been moving from one chain spot to the next, I love to see that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> yeah. Half the time or most of the time, all we're doing is staring at him. You know, we looking at the dog. You look at this one, that one, you know, and see how they move, see how they act. You spend a lot of time just watching your dog, you know, and that that's what yep. That chair is good because I'm lazy. I gotta sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, let me start with you, Eli. Historically speaking, when conditioning an animal, when did the panel members usually stop using, stop the usage of any supplements that were being given? I did. If you used it during the feed, you use it all the way through. Only thing that only thing that's only thing that you would stop is if you was using a muscle builder like a creatine or a, a mass builder or something like that. Then you would stop that. But if you was using anything else, like just an enhancer or something like that, you use all the way through and start to wean it off. Even uh, two weeks after that, you wean it off. You don't just cut it off because you have to let their body start to get used to it. Uh, 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 building themselves. Yes, sir. What about you, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, whatever I fed during the keep, I fed all the way through. So, some people talk about backing off on vitamins and iron and B12 and stuff like that. I did. Whatever mm -hmm. I supplemented with, I, I, I gave it in their daily feed, too. You know? And the only thing I increased in their, in their keep was their food. You know? But like I said, I also, you know, I exercise my dogs all the time. We was always doing something with them. Because if you don't, sometimes, like I mentioned before, you give them high protein, high fat, you know, vitamins, minerals, trace elements, all that. They can get hot spot. They aren't active. And if they're too heavy, you know, I, I didn't keep mine too heavy except during winter time. And then I only added a couple pounds anyways, you know, because they got on their house and all that, you know. They get used to it. I just don't don't like. I didn't like them fat, obese, you know. Especially people. If I'm, if I was 
matching them, I'm going to get them a few pounds over their weight, you know, even in the wintertime because they're, they're, you feed them a certain amount, they stay at that weight. So when you increase it in the wintertime, they're going to, they're going to gain a little weight and they're going to stay at that weight. And, and, uh, you know, the, their weight really, if you know, if, if any of you weigh your dogs regularly, you're going to, you're going to see that, that they maintain that weight pretty much the same. The only time it, it'll increase or decrease is, is how you feed them. So in the winter time, you give them a little bit more food, they're going to come up a little bit and maintain that weight. But I didn't, I didn't back off on anything. I didn't change anything. I didn't stop, you know, because they're, they're going to use it. You know? And, and I backed off on the work the last week, you know, I tapered it down. And then the last two or three days, depending on the dog, I didn't, that was all rest. You know, I take them out same time every evening, walk them out to, to empty and, you know, loosen up and warm up, make sure they're loose and like that. Don't, don't tighten up. But no work. And, uh, you know, it, it, it never affected my dogs. You know, I, I just, I just, in my mind, you know, they're going to need all that in a couple of days anyways, you know, and it's not going to two or three days. If you give them like a vitamin supplement, I didn't back off on it because, you know, anything like that, that's extra. They're going to piss it out anyway, but they're, they're, they're using it. They're storing it for the next couple of days until it's showtime. And then, you know, all hell is going to break. Through. Right. So no, I didn't, I didn't back off on anything. I didn't, you know, I didn't like adjusting too much. Especially that last week. That, that's when you really got to pay attention, you know. And you may have to make some adjustments here or there. Sometimes a day before, you know, I, I like them hungry. So I might give them a little less food, their last feed, you know, maybe even half their feeding, you know. But but I didn't like fucking with them too much, you know. Take this away, add that, you know. People worry about making weight. You know, so 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 they're taking food away or they're giving more food, this and that, a week, two weeks, three, whatever, you know, you're adjusting it too much. The dogs will come down naturally like they're yeah. supposed to. If you got the feed right and the supplements right, they're gonna they're gonna come down naturally because that last week they, they ain't losing no fat or nothing like that. You ain't building muscle, you know. It you, they're basically just it's it's moisture. They're they're drying out, if you want to put it that Absolutely. way. You know, that's what I was just, gonna say. I used to, I used to play with the water. If, if you, when you know how to play with the water, you can get you, you can fall on weight perfectly. I yep. kept when I kept on trying to play with the feed. That's how I lost all my mouth one one time. Yeah, and I was told that 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 was you're gonna lose something. You in damn good shape, but you're gonna see something missing. I lost all my damn mouth because yeah. I was playing with playing with when all I had to do was just walk the water back. Yep. And I, 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 yeah, I would feed, I would feed, I, I, I'll tell y'all, I would feed an ounce of water per pound. And at, that is what came out. When, when you talk about what comes out in the last two weeks, in the last two weeks, I would start walking that down a quarter, a, a, a quarter pound a day, basically, until I got to, uh, 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 10, 10 to 12 ounces. Once I got to 10 to 12 ounces, and their feed, I was good, and I let them, I let them, I let them free drink, because it was gonna come off anyway. I knew what they weighed when they when they pissed. I knew what they weighed when they shit, because after they pissed the shit, I weighed, and I knew what they, yep. was, I, I knew what they was gonna be on. Yep, yep. For example, a cup a cup of water, which is which is close to what piss is, you know, piss may be a little bit heavier because it's got stuff in it, but a cup of water weighs eight ounces. That, that's that's a good long walk out piss, you know. That's half a pound right there. And yeah, like I said, all, all exactly. you're losing, all you're losing during that last week, that peak week, is water. That's 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 what they're losing. They ain't losing no fat, you know. They ain't, they ain't you ain't building no muscle. All that's been done. Now you're tapering off because you're you're peaking them out, and then you want them to hit that mark, right on weight, maybe a little under, whatever. But but it's just moisture. That's the drying out process. Yeah. Dry, drying out I don't like mean de dehydrated. It just means they, 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 and the dogs do that naturally anyway. 
they'll, they'll go off their water. They, they don't want to drink water. That's why sometimes you got to give them water because they'll go all day without drinking it. Mm-hmm. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know what it is, but I know that's what they do. And if you they start to store kids, it in they, they start to store it in their cells. They start to store it, store it better in their cells. Their cells are moving, especially when you have a, a stronger cell from iron and, and, and the right phosphates in there. When they're carrying, they, they're getting off their lactic acid good and everything, and their body's recovering good. They start, they have stronger, bigger cells, and they start to store more in, in their cells, and they, they don't have to drink as much. They're not shivering it, they're not shivering it off at night. Like if you can't have them outside or something, or if they have that anxiety and they're anxious, they'll be shivering it off and shit, come down to that peak where they get a little loopy. When they're not doing that, and you have that feed right, and you have like, one thing you said that was key earlier, I caught that, that you said that a lot of people might, might not catch. You said trace minerals. A lot of people don't understand how big those trace minerals are when it's actually, when, you, when it comes to actually feeding their dogs and producing right. a, 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 a better a better functioning body. You know, so yeah, yep. that, that, that that's the big thing about it. Yeah, if if you Google them, you know, you know, just Google trace elements. What are they? What do they do? This and that. And, and they're, they're, they're parts that, that of minerals, certain minerals or parts that are in minerals. And, and it'll explain all what they do, you know, and, and why they're yeah. important. So, you know, but that, that's, that's uh, <laughs> ba- basically it. I didn't, I didn't change shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Let me go to Ram on that. Ram, uh, what it, um, when conditioning the animal, um, when did, when did you, uh, usually stop uh, giving them supplements or taking them away? Well, the shit I did give them, I didn't give many supplements, but I would give it to them all the way up to the last feed because it wasn't nothing too heavy like that that I was using at the time. It was real smooth, and, you know, you could do it like that. But I've seen people who have cut them out, you know, some two weeks out, some a week out. It just depends on who the conditioner is at that point, you know. But when I was doing it, no, nah, I just would feed it to them all the way up to the last feed. I didn't change the water or anything because I knew we was coming in right on time. So, yeah, I really, you know, that was a good question. But when I thought about it, I was like, I really didn't give a whole lot of supplements that would be detrimental that you would have to cut out so you don't over exceed anything in there as far as blood counting, iron and all that shit in it. I was feeding a lot of natural food, so it didn't even matter. I didn't use a lot of supplements. I would use real food for that. Yeah. Uh, another thing is is all these supplements, you know, or enhancers or whatever you want to call them, they're in food. You know, it, it's in food, most of or plants or whatever. There, there's a natural yep. effect to them, Super including, in, including toxins and and. You know, even apples and pears, you know, they have uh, formaldehyde in them, you know, but mm-hmm. it's real. It's, it's it's insignificant, but they produce that. We produce formaldehyde, you know, spices and all that. Those are toxins, you know, but, mm-hmm. but you'd, you'd have to eat, you know, a ton of it before it affected you. So yeah. it's always the, the dosage, the amount, you know, that, that matters. But just about everything, including creatine and all that, all that stuff, it's in food. Yeah, it's in the meat. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that that's with almost everything, you know, e- even synthetic stuff, you know, they make synthetic stuff. Well, it's it's just a, a copy of, of what's in natural food anyways, you know. That's like me and me and Ram were having a discussion about the greens. And I was t- basically telling him the functioning of, of the liver and how the liver has over 1,500 functions. But one of the big functions is it transitions lactic acid back into energy into the body, and part of what it needs is that is that those fo- those phosphates from those greens, you know, and that's part of that, that's part of what a lot of people don't don't understand when you look at any dog food, any supplement it has those phosphates in uh in uh, the uh, lipoic acids and different stuff uh, uh different things like that. So mm-hmm. most Man. of it, a lot a lot of superfoods have what you need in them if you look up superfoods. Yep, and it's not necessarily like seaweed or nothing like the kale, you feel me? I was like, shit, I think the seaweed with the kale, but, you know, further research showed that that would be overkill. 
there you go. Tell, you know, it got enough in it, especially if you mix it with the spinach and your sweet potatoes. You fucking 70% there as far as the shit you would need. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, hell yeah, bro. That shit is fucking, uh, yeah, just pay attention to the superfoods and what you give them, man. Get you a food scale, weigh that shit out. It's way better than supplement, supplementing the shit because you could fucking overdo it with supplements, and that's probably why some people cut them out, you know, a week or so yeah. out. They're not water so, uh, soluble, and if they're not water soluble, then they sit on the kidneys and they, that, you start to hit those heat walls because your kidneys are overworked, your liver's overworked. Yeah, that, that, that's where you get a lot of that from where people say, oh, Oh, it, re- it made me run hot. No, you gave us something that wasn't really water soluble, wasn't really breaking down in the body. It was sitting on our kidneys. And as the kidneys are, 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 are working through this process and, and uh, getting exerted, that heat starts to build up, that heat starts to uh, 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 go throughout the body. And they can't recover because you're taking away from the function of, of, of the body. Exactly. That's like not getting the fucking oil change on your race car. <laughs> Exactly. You're gonna be hot before you get down the track. Yeah. Fuck around, blow up when you get down to the end. <laughs> this dude is obsessed with our show, man. Get the fuck off of my page, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this dude is a weirdo, man. All that to sell a fucking puppy, man. Get the fuck out of here. How you at the top upper echelon and you a troll? Yeah, this is ridiculous, man. He, he got but that, that, that's not a good look for you. Everybody sitting here right now looking at you, looking at you be an immature kid, looking at you be a troll, and it's like, damn, it, it, it take it take a it take away value in your character, it take away va- value in you as a dog, man. Man, just sit the fuck back and sit down somewhere. I don't even like no men that's that that's messy like that. Like you a weirdo, dude. Yeah, you a bitch, nigga, bitch, nigga. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, cuz. For real. <laughs> this dude is just a weird, man. I don't know. I never seen no grown man act like this before. Uh, so. If you got a litter of pups dropping, just say, <laughs> hey, man, I got some pups dropping. Could you help me sell man. some? I don't know. I'll help you for a fee, homie. You see? Cause the dude always said he loved. Oh, I don't, I don't sell to the swamp. I don't want to be associated with the swamp. All that stuff. Why are you over here? Leave us alone. Go, go sell to the truck drivers, to all the good guys who wear suits and stuff. Sell to those people. Leave us the fuck alone, man. Uh, all them boxers, you know. Go fuck with them, yeah. man. God damn, you know some rich motherfucker. What you over here with our broke dick ass for, man? <laughs> <laughs> God damn, God, get a life, please. I hear they got them in a renting center. You can rent them out, bro. <laughs> hey, but I got a question for you here. Uh, this question is, when starting a kennel, what else is just as important as health and culling, Mr. Garcia? Uh, socializing would be one of the main things, you know. When I say socializing, it doesn't necessarily mean socializing with other animals. But what I mean is having it accustomed to uh, different environments, different area, different people, loud noises, you know, music, crowds, kids, you know, uh, so that so that even even the surface they walk on, a lot of dogs won't, they don't like to walk on cement or they're not familiar with grass, you know, rugs inside the house, tile and shit like that. So get them used to everything. But when you're starting your, you know, starting a yard, if you're starting a yard, put it that way. You know, the main thing is to have your setup, you know, your your houses, your chain space or your kennels, you know, make, make sure, uh, you know, uh, there's no uh, uh, varmints running around or you got, uh, uh, you know, garbage or any of that stuff. You know, you want you want to have a, a good environment for your dogs. Or those other two things, I would say socializing the dog, having it accustomed to almost anything so that nothing bothers them, really. They, they just kind of ignore it or they're accustomed to it, you know, riding around in the car, and, you know, spraying water on them from a hose, all kinds of stuff, you know. A lot of dogs shy away when you lift the rake, you think they're, that you're going to beat the shit out of them, you know, or something, or, you know, it's an aggressive action. Just have them used to it. All kinds of stuff. Kids are great if you have kids, you know, and the dogs are good with kids. 
you know, don't leave them unsupervised. But the kids just act like kids. They do all kinds of shit to the dog. You know? They'll yank their tail and push them and try and ride them and play with them and poke their eyes and all that stuff, you know. So I'm not saying let the kids abuse them, but they should be they should be where, where they don't trip on anything, you know. If they're fine inside the house, riding around the car, outside, different people. You know, a lot of times dogs are kept on the yard and they're not, you know, they're not familiar with anybody else and they trip on on other people that come around. They might be aggressive towards them or they might they might be afraid of them, you know. So I think that besides the two that were mentioned, I think socializing them is, is the main thing. Sure. Eli, what, what would you say most important uh, things besides uh, health and um, culling? Um, I would say that you have a vet, that you get to know a vet. I mean, I know that would probably go along with Hill, but at the same time, you're you're saying you're feeding them and keeping them healthy versus you having somebody to take them to, get to know a vet and, and, and have your vet on, on hand. Also, start preparing yourself to be as self-sufficient as possible get whatever material you, you need to read and uh uh whatever groups you need to be a part of to, to to learn the knowledge that you need to learn because i mean you always gonna run into things no matter how long you've been in dogs you're always gonna run into things that that, that throw you off I, I i ran an iv on a dog for two weeks two weeks and thought i was out the woodworks of of rat poison because some neighbors uh, uh we had this development going on around our, in our in our area and some neighbors had put out some rat poison and there it was that uh the the rat came to the water to the dog's water the dog the dog killed the rat the dog ended up getting sick the liver started to mess up i'm running ivs and uh uh uh, uh feeding and and, and, and and trying to watch what I feed and everything and trying to get it. And my old buddy say, did you get some activated charcoal? I said, huh? He said, bro, you could have went to Walmart and got some activated charcoal for a few dollars and made him go. It, it would have uh, uh, soaked that toxin up in that poison and would have made him throw it up. I, as long as I had been around dogs, I didn't know. You learn something all the time. All the time. You know, when I was in when I was in Mexico, uh, one of the guys there was a he's a veterinarian, but but he's a specialist surgeon, you know, bones and all mm -hmm. that stuff. We were talking about mm -hmm. dogmen and uh, tell me, you know, I'm amazed when I talk to these guys, at how much knowledge they have. You know, they have no schooling. They have no formal education, but they learn. And some of them learn from vet tech or they learn from veterinarians or they learn on their own or they learn for other dogmen. But they have a lot of knowledge, you know, and uh, I just wanted to throw that in there because that's traditionally that's what dog men do, you know, is you learn mm -hmm. the aftercare, you learn maintenance, worming, all, all that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But but having, like Eli said, having a good vet that you can trust is, is good, you know. It's You never know, man. You might have an emergency or you might, you know, need to call on them. And, hey, and I see somebody in the, in the chat said, uh, Arrowhead said, Arrowhead, that's how why I thought I was out the woodwork. That's what I was using. I was using the vitamin K and, and, and K's uh, uh, to keep him pissing and clearing his kidneys out. And I was you, I was using the running the IV on him. And I, I, I thought I was out the woodworks two weeks and he was eating and everything. And then all of a sudden, shit, that fucking liver failure started happening. And you start to see that dark ass shit he throwing up. And I'm like, fuck. And if I, I would have completed it, if I would have had that activated uh, 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 charcoal. Man, I don't even know. I didn't think of that when I was talking to you about the shit. I bro. Hey. I've been drinking that shit when I work out. You feel me? Like you, a little you bit of You forget so much stuff. You, you forget more than a lot yeah. of people know. After yeah. You get so yeah, that's true. Hell that's yeah. True. But that's good. That's yeah. something good to have on deck, too. And you can go to Walmart and get it. Yeah, yeah. I think Bachman mentioned it several shows back you know yep. he, yep. he 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 uses it himself you know? yep mm -hmm. yeah. i'm gonna start using it maybe get rid of this smoke in my lung <laughs> 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 charcoal Sweet. on charcoal i guess you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, salute. salute to the brother dr hood in the building what's up bro 
Salute, yeah, exactly. Dr. Hood. Salute. He My said, guy. Good blood. Don't be cheap. Hey, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Like, mm-hmm. just start with some good blood, man. Mm-hmm. If you can, go and buy, go out and buy you a proven male and a proven female. That shit is going to cost you, but it's also going to save you a lot of time where if you were to just try to build a kennel off of pups and raising them up, you know, you know, doing it that way, if you could afford mm-hmm. it. And if it's something for sale, maybe you could hire the A team type shit, but start off with that. And fucking, uh, medical supplies, man, you know, get, get all of that shit, everything you could get your hands on, get that shit, bro. And this is going on to something like you already got the land. Like crew one said, I mean, that's important. You feel me? So you ready to take it to the next step and find a, a a good dog man in your area that can show you how to set up your yard the proper way. You know, you don't want the dogs too close. You don't want them on too short of a chain. You don't want them on no bullshit tie outs, none of that, you know? So that and uh, get, get the proper housing for them. All the shit that motherfuckers make look bad for the dogs, get the right shit of that, you know? If you can't have fucking barrel dog houses, build some wooden ones, you know, check all the laws and regulations in your area so you can follow that shit because you motherfuckers will come and fuck with you, bro. And uh, shit, just start off with the good dogs, homie, and, and good luck. Cold hard. And ain't no fucking secret. Shit, schoolboy tell you he called dogs right off a Jeep. Yeah, so sure. you can start off with the good dogs. You're going to have to call something right off of them. <laughs> That's part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just keep the good ones and yep. keep the ones yeah. that don't make the grade. If yep. if you're in my group, go to the picture section and scroll. Keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You'll come to a picture or a couple of pictures that Ram put up. Doctor supplies, man, and just enhance the picture and write all that shit down. It's all in there. Just about everything you need is in them pictures. I don't know if you yep. remember that Ram. You put that up. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of shit, man. But, you know, it's always something. There's always something. There's always something new. Try and keep on top of it. Hell, even vets do that. You know, they, they and doctors and surgeons and all that. They reference their books. They reference their manuals. They forget shit, too, you know. And uh, I always mention that Merck manual, you know, anything. There, there's I got several books that just like home remedies for dogs, you know, and, and country doctor shit, you know, that, that it all helps, man. It tells you how to suture stuff up, you know, and, and just tinctures, you know, for your dogs and all kinds of stuff. You know, it's good to to have something to reference to. You just look it up. Hey, my dog, hey. Know, something, and then it'll help you out. No matter how much of an asshole he was, say the the amount of information that California Jack, Jack collected in that pit bull Bible. Hey, it's something good to have, man. Hey, he that is a must have. Much shit as I talked to that motherfucker in about him, he put together a hell of a book. I never take that away from his one in one yeah. ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Ed Farron's book has a lot of info too. Yeah, well, you yeah, got yeah. a lot it's of the shit game. from Ed Farron. From book. Ed Farron. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, it was Chris. I think that was the, the doctor guru. But yeah, it's all there's all kinds of stuff. You just yeah. he'll go to Amazon, look shit up. But yeah. It's nice to have help. Yeah, I, I, I would say too, um, if you're gonna start a kennel, man, just think you should start your yard off the right way. Besides the dogs and in the setups and stuff, I think you you as a person gotta have the right mentality. Um, you know what I mean, and be dedicated to your yard and not just be getting some dogs, just say you got some dogs and shit, but actually be willing to work with the dogs and be honest about what you got on your yard, you know, and have the balls to call your call your your whole yard if need be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, calling. I mean, could you just imagine somebody today calling some dogs right off a jeep? I doubt it happened today. Motherfuckers be like, "Oh man, he good man. He's, he's very yeah. good man." Yeah. The only excuse the blood is there. Yeah, yeah. 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 There you right. go. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have the yeah. balls to to just make some tough fucking decisions and shit, man. And you know. And start over if you got to, you know what I mean? You know, it ain't like you got nothing to put. You know I mean, somebody, hey, what happened to dogs you had? Ah, uh, shit, they didn't make it. I'm getting some more yeah. shit. But that's just, I mean, it's a tough shit, but that's what you got to do, man. I mean. Yeah. Hey, you oh, know oh, what was funny? 
Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Scoobo. I was going to say, most people do that anyway when you're starting out, you know. You, 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 you're just getting what you can get, and, and you have to go through it. And, and you know, you'll learn along the way, but but until you find stuff that's solid from good, reputable people and all that, you know, unless you get lucky, which that happens too. But you're going to be going through dogs, you know, for whatever reason. And calling, like I always say, don't mean killing them, you know, you give them away or neuter mm-hmm. them, whatever people do, but you don't breed them, you know. And, and uh, but that that's part of the process too, you know. There's really no, no quick. Uh, road to it you know it's a long process and like ram said if you get if you can get going grown dogs and start off like that you'll be a few years ahead at least in making your breedings to see if they work out rather than than getting pups and then raising them you know you can go either way but just understand that you get pups it's going to take longer yeah it's two to three years (laughs) just to see if they even worth breeding then depending exactly. on what you do, you might not breed them same puppies until they five years old. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. once you're done campaigning them and doing whatever you do with them, you look up the time fly with these dogs, bro. Like two years sound like a long time to wait, but shit, my puppy about to be a year old. It seems like I just got this motherfucker. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> bro. I was just gonna yeah. say that. Like people was talking about that puppy shit. Be like, bro, man, all these dogs I got in my yard. I got the motherfuckers when they was all puppies. And now they ass is going to show and prove and get the fuck from around here. It's that time already. See, yeah. that shit go by so goddamn fast, bro. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. You look up, this motherfucker pissing with his leg up and dick coming out. You're like, what the hell, man? Yeah, humping on yeah. everything moving. Yeah. <laughs> like Mike Larry, you pit bull with the little pink thing hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. Man, that shit go by quick, fast, in a hurry, man. I was just tripping about that. Like, bro, it's 2022. Like, bro, just fucking, it's been two years since the fucking uh, COVID shit first happened, the, po- the pandemic and shit. That shit, like, seemed like it was just like, I don't know. Shit, like, shit just, going, huh, like, just happened last month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look up. Yeah. yeah, these dogs be grown, bro, and look up again, they'll be old. So, yeah, that's why I said if you can start with grown dogs, that's a part of the game that I learned just on my come up, it'll save you Nick, Nick? a couple no, you, of years. You ain't got to worry about Nick, about uh, Doc, Nick. Uh, Doc, Doc, he's solid. Solid as a rock, like Ashford Simpson say. Solid as a rock. <laughs> yeah. Got a singer in the group. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be capping on the scene. I'll be rapping like a motherfucker, though. <laughs> uh, Nada86, salute to you in the super chat. Appreciate the support. He says, salute to the panel. Salute to you, family. Salute. Yes, indeed. All right. Now we got another question here. Uh, let me see here. What is the proper age to determine an animal's condition weight? Yes, 12 months is too young. We said, well, he answered this question, is it? So what, what's the oh, proper well, age? Yeah, that was me being sarcastic. He was saying he was asking if okay. uh, twelve months was too young, and that's like, yeah, fuck yeah, that's way too young to start trying to pick a dog weight. <laughs> you that's feel cool. me? That motherfucker gonna grow yeah, up until he's three years old. Even be really active with him. I mean, he may have had his little touches and scuffies, uh, 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 incidents, or whatever, but that's way too young to even be active with him like that. Yeah, you, know, you might have had a little bump or something, but. Like, yeah, it's rare enough to be saying I'm picking a weight. That's rare. Yeah, it's, it's rare you'll get a macho buck pup that was macho buck. You know, that motherfucker went out at 14 months old. I mean, you know, it was looking at him around 12 months old. That's a, an exceptional dog and not the rule. Same with uh, Grand Champion Virgil. You know, the motherfuckers go out young, but them that's rare and far and few in between. So, don't try that. More dogs are being ruined trying to do that than not, bro. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And if you put them through a keep, it's it's unwarranted stress on their body. They're not done growing. They are mature physically and mentally. And it's okay to exercise them. It's okay to introduce them to whatever work you're going to give them when they're adults, just so they know how to do the work. But to put them through a keep or stress them out like that, no. I don't know if it could stunt their growth or whatever, but it's not helping. You do that. It's way too young. You know, get 
Hey, hold yeah. on. Hey, Terry C, neither one is the correct way to call. Fuck out of here with that shit. How I call is I get them neutered or spayed and give them to somebody who want to pet. That's a, that's a this motherfucker crazy, that's a, man. Yeah, I'm not, that's, I'm gonna block that dude. That's a, yeah. uh, that's one of them animal control weirdos. Yeah, you better not be out there that. fucking shocking or shooting your dog, man. Just what the fuck? I'm gonna put this up again for y'all. You here. gotta be a weirdo to do this. Is the definition of calling? Like okay. Yeah, calling is the act or process of selecting and removing uh, the desirable or undesirable individuals from the group. So what that means is if you know you're not going to breed this dog because he's showing you something, he or she's showing you something you don't like, then you just remove the dog from your program. That's all it means. It don't mean you're killing the dog and none of that shit that you see in these documentaries and shit that they put out to scare, you, scare the shit out yeah. of you. Another example of calling a motherfucker out of the group is blocking your stupid ass. You've been right. cold. <laughs> you didn't get shot or electroshocked. Or shot in the head. You got fucking took out the program. You still alive, safe, and well, right? That's what culling me, you fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, salute to Can't Stop, Won't Stop in the super chat. Appreciate the support, fam. Says, Eli, you mentioned X-Factor breeding in an uh, old episode. Can we discuss that? Oh, man. That's one of my, that's one of my favorite topics, one of my favorite discussions. It's really like uh, horse people, the uh, thoroughbreds. Is it is, is how they use their format for breeding? They basically follow the maternal line, and because of, there's so much mitochondrial mighty, uh, mitochondria uh, DNA that's actually linked to the uh, that where well, we know more about the mito mitochondria it, uh, X chromosome DNA. We know more about that, and it's so it, it gives so much information off, and so much is passed on from just that mitochondria DNA and the X chromosome. So they have that X factor breeding, which links like if you have a male, like, you know, the male is only going to get a top chain of, of Y's. It's only going to be that daddy's Y all the way down to it. But if you have a female, you can blend a family a, 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 a little bit stronger through a female producer, like a real a good, solid producing female by breeding a father that has a, a damn good mother to a female that is a damn good that, that that's a damn good mother and certain attributes that they have the same you can start to funnel those attributes in and it's a science to it that that they've used and it's been working because obviously we see the thoroughbred horses how they are different from other horses how they pick up speed they pick up basically picking up the speed trait is what they've been doing but a lot of uh a lot of dog men that have thought outside the box and thought of, thought more scientifically have used that method. I, I know I talked to uh, uh, Pinalero once before, and he he used like the same type thought process, and he 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 told me that same type of deal once before, and he he had an excellent breeding program when he uh, 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 putting his animals together, even just pure selection and not just so much uh, 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 he produced a performance by his selection alone. You know if that if that makes sense to, uh, to you. Certain individuals, he already knew what their genetic make was. He knew what animals he wanted to breed to him, and he was able to produce or produce with them. You know, when you start to get to that point where you know your family and their consistencies that much, though, it's what it takes to even get to that point. And that's how he was able to do that. But I, I am one of those people that love to look at other uh, the the greyhounds, how they condition and how they run, you know, and all the different things, but. Yeah, the X factor breeding comes from the horse people from thoroughbreds. Hey, before I even knew what that was called, I would do that. Like if I fucking did a good breeding and I wanted something that was like the bitch, say like I bred my bitch to your male, but I wanted a male version of my bitch, I would just keep the male that was the most like the bitch as far not even as far as look, but how he acted and everything, just watching them come up, you know. And once I got further in the game and started, you know, looking at the, the scientific side of it, I was like, okay, that's what that shit is called. And that shit actually works. And it helps, too, it, go back to the bad mom. Say you got a good fucking bitch yep. and a good producing bitch, but she's a bad mom. You could take whatever son that make it that's like her, and he nine times out of ten going to have everything that she got but in a male. And you could just breed him to, to bitches that could be good moms and still, exactly. you know, get a nice percentage of good dogs that way that would hold the traits of the grandma and the sire. Mm -hmm. mm. 
some deep stuff there. Deep yeah, stuff. as an example, uh, this comes from the horse racing community too. Six out of every, or well, one out of every male stud is a good producer. Six, or uh, one out of ten, is what I should say. Studs, horse racing studs, is a good producer compared to a, the mares is six out of ten. So I would I would think it's the same is true with with dogs, and that's why you know I always uh, advise to pay attention to your females, and that stacking process that Eli and and uh, Ram was talking about, where where the female takes after the sire and the male takes after the dam. I follow that that pattern too. And and you know when you're successful, if you look at how you do things. And then you go back and look at the science of it, you know, even though you didn't know the science behind it till later, you're going to find out that, that what you did work. The science is just telling you why and how. Exactly. And I but took exactly. that same shit and, and used that when I made my own breedings. And that's why I got dope ass kids. Cause yeah, I didn't believe no bullshit, done. bitches. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for real. Yeah. Like, hey, they all business owners, and their parents is business owners. So you, you know, go. what's there your you parents doing? What you doing? Is y'all producing mm -hmm. over here? Yeah. And I yeah. pick three of them like that, and all three of my kids is the shit went yeah. wrong and yeah. a couple breedings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hey, just got. With, I just got with the. I got with a pretty girl because I didn't want no other kids. So. <laughs> that, that, that's how that's how that works. All my kids are good looking, man. Oh well, Great. yeah, I didn't. Yeah, you got. Yeah, I didn't breathe no burger wolves. Now, come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I threw my baby mom was bad. Salute to Mike Kirkland. Oh, go 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 read this real quick. Salute to the brother Mike Kirkland in the super chat. Appreciate the support, fam. Says, do any of you gentlemen have a favorite bloodline? For durability, we we'll start with you, Eli. I, you know what? I I, I always love the Carver and Surreal's dogs. Just uh, like when I say Carver, I mean like the old banjo stuff, stuff like that. The old banjo and uh uh uh, what's that? The old uh hooting hard time stuff. I always looked at them and like and like they bone structures. I like the midnight cowboy uh, 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 bone structures for that for that. And I also uh, uh, I just said it. Shit, the other line I just so, uh, uh, sorrels. Sorrels. Yeah. yeah, I love those sorrels dogs for the for, for that good durable uh, uh, look. Not only that, big big canines, big powerful, strong strong dogs. I like more complete package athletes. In those sorrels dogs, you know that that I that I did see, I did I did like what I saw from you, and I like the snooty stuff too. Okay, what you say, Ram? It's a couple, you know. I've seen like the alligator shit. I had a fucking uh, alligator red boy bitch that was fucking built like a tank and durable in, in the fucking goods, and she was one of them ones too. We was talking about earlier that only got to get two. And you know, after a second, it was hard to find somebody else who you know wanted to get their shit fucked up. <laughs> but uh that alligator with the red boy cross, that was some real good shit. Cause I had pure red boy dogs off of the same sire and they would, you know, tear up easy and shit. They wasn't too durable. They were still good dogs, but they wasn't too durable at all. But that alligator helped a lot. And if you can, it's probably gonna be fucking hard as fuck too because only a few people got it and I only fuck with one of them and I wouldn't fucking point them none of you motherfuckers in his direction get some Kobe shit that Kobe shit is fucking durable as fuck man it, it add a lot to your shit but it gotta be the good working Kobe shit that's why I say it's hard to find <clears throat> and even harder to get once you do find it because that shit is fucking it's the goods when you cross it, man. For real, I crossed some into my uh, Jeep Red Boy Jocko Mill and fucking got a modern day dime dog and shit. That motherfucker was the goods until he ran into his daddy, you know, because his daddy was the real goods <laughs> and he was way yeah, you bigger know, I... too, so it didn't work out for him. But he was a good dog. And uh, lastly, I say, uh, like the brother Eli said, either some good sor sorrel stuff. It was some big, solid motherfuckers. Nice, 
bone structure, nice deep rooted teeth, big old hangers and cutters. Uh, if you don't know the difference, go back to a couple shows. OG Garcia uh, explained that shit very well, ever so eloquently. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I would go with that with the Sorrel stuff, man. If, if you could find like all the old blood, if you could find it in a good working form, it, it's some good shit to add for uh, durability. Like, so if you could get some Canadian peat tombstone shit, it's more heavier on the tombstone with the Malonian shit in there. So you get like tombstone size built looking dogs, man. You know, a little bit undershot looking, just, you know, a good fucking bulldog looking dog. That's what I would go for. Yes, sir. What about you, Mr. Garcia? Yeah, the Jeep and the uh, Bully Sun, I use both, you know, the Jeep, are, they're, they're tough. Good bone structure, durable. That's one of the, the traits I like about them. Plus their strength and power. And uh, the bully sun dogs, you know, the short squat stuff. I like that. The white dogs too. And ah, uh, yeah. yeah, damn, yeah, yeah. yeah. them motherfuckers. Yeah. Hey, that shit right there. I can honestly say I had some bullshit Heinz or shit. You know, I was crossing it and getting it pure, and that shit was trash. But they crossed it with that fucking white blood. Yeah, man. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? This yeah. off of that? Dude? What the hell? <laughs> Yeah, give me yeah. all of these. <laughs> yeah. They only let yeah. me get one. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, bullshit alien and yeah. Jap and yeah. wishbone and the Donner stuff, all of that shit, all yeah. that old Foo Fowler yeah. and Crenshaw stuff, man. That yeah. shit is yeah. the goods if you can find it in good working. That old Ferris, yeah. that old Ferris and Showalter uh, stuff. I had that old Ferris Showalter with the brakes ball stuff crossed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all the common denominator and all that. Like Eli was saying, is that Carver stuff. And it's it's not just the Carver blood; it's the Carver from the Ed Crenshaw, uh, yes. the the Midnight Cowboy, the Hall Stomper, the White Blood, the the uh, the uh, the Stu uh, Fowler the, and Reno. The, no, you you said banjo and all that stuff. That's what their yeah. common denominator is. It goes back mm -hmm. to the Ed Crenshaw stuff from from Carver. All those mm -hmm. those bloods we've been talking about. Except for maybe the the sorrels, unless the sorrels got the boomerang in the it. Sor the that. sorrels, no. Remember, sorrels got Chivo, and he got the old Ed Crenshaw in too. He yeah, had it's, it got, it's he got it's got two power stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's all that. That's what it is because them dogs back then, Leo Kennard had them. You know, they all come from Ed Crenshaw. Freddie Jones had it. You know, they it's them short, squatty, long, bow legged, sway back, thick bone, thick. Heavy muscle, big ass fucking teeth. Bullshit had teeth in his head. They wouldn't fit in his head, man. If you look at his picture, it looks like his hips are bulged out. Whatever reason, those are just his teeth. That's how big his teeth were. Fucking Dracula fangs. Yeah, man. I mean, the big ass fucking teeth, man. Alien was the same way, but they all have that that, or not all of them, but those that white blood is the ones you were talking about. Heinzel. Old Ed Crenshaw stuff, that's what bullshit and Jap and Alien and Wishbone and all them, they were white blood Heinzel crosses. And they come out like that, man. They, they're durable. They, they unbelievable. Steve used to say his fights don't start till an hour mark. Because most of them were long distance fights, you know. And, and they were just tough, rugged. You could cut them, see them cut, and their legs were so big, you, you couldn't even see the cut unless you looked inside their legs. They still have three quarters of a leg left with big old gashes on their inside of their leg. That's how that's how big they were. Yeah, yeah hey, so, that, that's the combination right there that bullshitting cars, honey. Mm -hmm. yep. That's where it was, yeah. that bullshit mm -hmm. cars, honey. Yeah, I'll and the, the dog the, the, that was built like that. Like, yeah, built yeah. for yeah. tough, like, yeah, yeah. I like them. That, that, the, mm -hmm. the, the banjo and all that, you know, the, or the, or the, you know, stomping out of Arts Missy, same shit. They, they like that too. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from too. It's got that Ed Crenshaw stuff, Arts Missy, Boomerang, you know, Stu Fowler, yep. Major, Reno, Leprechaun, all, mm -hmm. all them dogs, you know. Seven, eight, you there? Oh man, my bad. I'm talking to myself. Oh, thank you. But yeah, um, 
<laughs> got to this, 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 these questions pretty quick, man. It was a good show, man. Um, Ram, why don't you give the people a disclaimer? As always, man, none of this shit is intended for, nor should it be used towards any illegal purposes. If you do so happen to use any of this information in that shit, man, keep it to yourself. Don't come back telling what you're doing online or none of that. Because for one, I don't want to know. That shit don't float my boat one way or the other. For two, fucking don't be talking to people you don't know. Follow the old school model. Stranger danger. Other than that, man, it's Monday. Tomorrow, Tuesday. Get to it. Look up. It's about to be Friday and the weekend coming. So just keep scratching hard through the week, man. If you're working out, fucking work out. If you ain't working out, start working out. It's finna get hot. You know, the ladies is out. And I don't, you know, I can't get them all. I got a lot of them, but, you know, I can't get them all, man. So I need y'all to step it up. Other than that, salute to uh, the homeboy Eli, 7 8 and the OG schoolboy, man. It's been a fucking good one. Yes, sir. Make sure y'all yes, go sir. register your dogs with uh, schoolboy. Uh, hit them up on Facebook. The link to that is in the description underneath the video. Yes, sir. Hey, and for the IG followers, man, uh, Accept my request when I send you one. Don't just send me one of your shit private. I want to see who you is and what you're doing. Make sure you're no weirdo, man. If you ain't just fucking got no fucking post of I'm not going to accept that shit because I'm going to think you're a weirdo. And go subscribe to my channel. When I get a 1,000, I'm going to start going live, show y'all how to do my keeps because everybody keep asking. I'm going to tell you, though, it's not exciting. It's not fun. It's a lot of repetitions, but the shit work. <laughs> yes, sir. Good deal. Mr. Garcia, any last words for the people? Yeah, good show. Salute everybody. We'll see you soon, and thanks for your support. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, what about you, Eli? Any last words for the people? Hey, always a good time coming and chopping it up with y'all talking dogs, man. Y'all got questions. We got answers. If we ain't got answers, we'll get answers, and we'll enjoy the conversation. Other than that, peace. Uh, yeah, the IG is game dog talk. All one word, the name of the show, Game Dog Talk. Yes, sir. So salute to everybody who came through. Salute to the panel. Much love to everybody in the chat and the Super Chats. We appreciate the support. We'll catch y'all next Sunday, man. Sunday. Peace. Uh, yeah, peace. We up out of here. <laughs>